You good? <laughs> no worries. Um, so as Helen said in the introduction yesterday, one of the high up priorities on the list of things to do for the GSQ was to make our data more accessible. So that's something that we've been working on. We've gone through this whole geoscience data modernization project. Um, and that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. So here's an outline of my talk. So I'm gonna talk about GSQ's data principles and that includes some of the reasons why we're getting you to fill in these new templates in our reporting standards. I'm gonna talk about our GitHub repositories, which is kind of cool for a government department to have a GitHub repository. We're living in the future, it's fantastic. Um, a little bit about our open data portal uh, and about how to use the API to access the contents in the open data portal. And then I'm going to talk about the OCR, about historical reports. So this is a project that we've gone through to make some of these older reports text searchable and machine readable. And then some of the things that we've done with that. So building an index and a text search app. So that's where we're going to go. First up, the role of GSQ, as you guys all know, our role is really to support you guys, support exploration and this data-driven exploration. Uh, and so data is at, really at the core of the services that we provide. So it's really important. The whole restructuring, um, bringing all our old data into these new data principles and structuring our um, templates and the data coming in going forward is really just to fit in with this fair data principles. So this is what we're trying to implement. So all our data is findable. So we have rich metadata. They all have persistent identifiers. Uh, it's accessible. So it's readable to both machines and humans um, and trusted repositories. We've got standard file formats so that they're interoperable. Uh, and David will talk a little bit later on about some of the vocabularies, the shared language that we use so that we all understand that we're talking about the same thing. Uh, and then reusable. So this is the investment going forward, right? So I know change is a pain in the butt and having to fill out new templates and find new ways to do things. It's a pain, we know that. But this is an investment in the future because going forward, we're going to have really great quality data and you guys are going to get fed that back. It'll be useful into the future. So that's what this reusable part of it is for. All right, so GSQ has GitHub repositories. So this documents not only the geoscience data modernization project that we've just gone through. If, I'm not gonna bore you to death with our system architecture and with our database formats or any of those sorts of things. If you're curious, by all means, please go and have a look. It's all the information's up there. But I am gonna point out a couple of things that I think will be useful for you. So here's a couple of key ones. So we have one on our geoscience data catalog. So that's our open data portal. It explains a little bit about the information that we have on there, the kind of structures underneath, how to use it. We've got one on our vocabs, which David will talk about a little bit later. Uh, it explains some of the terms that we use and what the definitions for those are. And this one at the bottom here, this open data API, that's why I'm gonna be referring to a fair bit in this talk. So these are all publicly available, it's all um, open to everybody and you're welcome to collaborate with us on these as well. All right, I'm assuming by now you've all been to the open data portal and had a bit of a look around. Uh, if you haven't, there's the address at the top and this is what the, move it out of the way. That's what the page looks like. Uh, and you know that you can search through the open data portal to find the information that you're after. So there's quite a few search filters. You would have seen this first one. So you can type in a search term and you can use these or and and sorts of um, operators to, to narrow down what you're after. You can use an advanced search to combine terms together. You can search on particular attributes if you know exactly what you're after. You can look at data types. So if it's a report or a magnetic gravity, something like that. You can search on commodities on a region. So if you have a spatial bounding box, you can pull back all the information that relates to that region. Uh, what was that one? If you've got a particular report type, you can search and narrow down on those. We've got all our data sets tagged with, tagged with these earth science data categories. So that helps you narrow down as well. And then lastly, data formats as well. So you really can narrow down in the open data portal exactly the kind of information that you're after. And the best part is you can do the exact same thing with an API. In fact, you can probably do even more with an API. So 
an API is just a software intermediary. It sounds very fancy, but all it is is a, like a gateway. You send your query through this API, it contacts our open data portal and pulls back exactly the information that you're after. And all the information we, is in that open data API GitHub repository that I spoke to you about. There's instructions and documentation so you can learn how to format your own API queries. So here are some examples. This is what they look like. They function pretty much like a link. So that's why they look like they're in a link there. And this is how you build one. So because it's a link, you can type it directly into your browser or you can use it in a script or you can use it as a data source in a Power BI or a Tableau style business analysis tool. Or like I said, you can type it directly into your browser and it has three parts. So the first part is the open portal address. The second part is the result type that you want. So maybe it's a particular data set that you're after or a report number or whatever it is specific. And also the filter that you, like any filters. So if you're looking in a date range or in a spatial region or for a report type, you can narrow down um, just like you can in the open data portal. You can do the same thing with the API. So this is what I'm saying about the three different parts. So the first part is the open portal address. The second part is the results type that you're after. And the third type is the filtering information. And you can use multiple filters in your query as well. You join them all together. So when you do an API call to the open data portal, what comes back to you is in the form of a JSON format. So it's a text file. Um, it comes back as a big block of text. It looks a bit intimidating, but you can make this little trick. You can put a JSON formatter on your browser and it makes it really easy to read. So I'm gonna give you an example here. And I'm going to try this live. So cross your fingers for me. Oh, yes, I have to go to here. To go to the. Turn that off. Turn that off. Yeah. Oh, just no. <laughs> what topic? Click on that. Oh, just click it off. Yeah. Sure. That's great. Thank you. You know, yeah, and you just drag that across. Okay, so I'm just going to put it to raw first. Scary as it does if you don't know. Yeah. <coughs> so that's what it looks like if you don't have the formatter on. It's just this great big block of text. It's a bit scary. It's a bit intimidating. It's hard to find what you're after. But if you have the formatter mm -hmm. turned on, it looks like that. It's much nicer. And you can see it's broken into sections. And I'm assuming you can all see my mouse if I have that. So see all these black little facets here? You can use those in your filters with the API as well. So there's a lot more filters you can use on an API than you can in the open data portal. So it's a lot more powerful and a lot more flexible for you. And I'm also gonna show you a trick actually that David and I use all the time. So if you scroll down to, so what I've done here is I've opened up just a particular report. It's got a uh, PID. Uh, if you scroll down to URL, a URI, sorry. You can open it directly in the browser from the API. You don't have to download it. Um, you can read through. There's another URL on there. If you wanted to download it directly, you just click the button, it downloads directly to your computer. So there's a lot of really nifty tricks you can do with the API um, that sort of shortcuts rather than having to click through all the different options in the open data portal. So now you know you've got choices. All right. So, with the API, what you can do is do the bulk download. So in the same way that you can with Open Data Portal, you click through, you get all your filters, and you end up with a set of reports or data sets that you're interested in. You can do the exact same thing with the API. Uh, we have some example Python scripts on our Open Data API GitHub site that you're welcome to. You can, they're ready to go. Um, they work. And if you have a list of reports or data sets or whatever that you're after, you can use this script to download them all in bulk, all at once, in the same way that you would with the open data portal. 
All right, now I'm going to switch gears and tell you a little bit about our um, OCR and of historical reports. So the whole point of this is to make this information accessible and to um, open up some of the exploration potential that might be hiding in some of these reports and to be able to search across commodities and across report types and across time. So this is where we started. GSQ has over 100,000 different reports in our holding uh, since 1879. So you can imagine there's quite a collection. There's probably a lot of information in there. Some of them are not so great condition. So a lot of the paper-based ones had been scanned into TIFF and PDF and image-based files decades ago. So old digital formats, which are not really compatible for these modern data science techniques. So we had to go through some processes to make them, uh, to modernize these digital formats and to make the text in there uh, accessible. So we had a project with QUT. They did a lot of work with this, finding the right kind of tools and what works best in our reports and OCRing these for us as well. So some of the problems that we came across was that some of the reports are really large. So some of the older ones are over 500 pages because everything was all crammed in there. Um, multiple file types, multiple files. Uh, sometimes they're handwritten notes or stains or tears. They might have been really weird typewriter fonts or low resolution tables and photocopies of tables that were as part of reports uh, and complex imaging, mapping, drilling, diagrams, things like that. Um, so we had to go through a few different tools to get the information out. So these are the ones we settled on, and I'm telling you that in case you have any of your own reports that you want to um, put through these sorts of processes. So the Wondershare PDF Element Pro was the software that we found did the bulk of our work for us. It was really cheap, it's really accurate, and it worked really well. So most of our reports have been OCR'd with this uh, Wondershare Pro. But the ones that were handwriting or the weird fonts or if there were stains and things like that that were really just didn't work too well, um, we put them through this OCR web service API. And that was great. That worked really well. Um, you could probably do all of them like that if you wanted to, but it's pricey. So we only saved that for the ones we needed it for. And for our images, getting the text out of the images, we found that Google Cloud Vision worked the best for us. So these are the, that's the, the tool set that we use to OCR these reports. So... I don't know if I mentioned that about 60,000 of those 100,000 reports have been OCR'd. And those OCR versions of each of those reports have been put back in the open data portal with the reports they came from. So they're all accessible, they're all open to you. You're welcome to help yourself and do whatever you like with them. So as part of that, um, what we wanted to do was uh, increase the capability of our open data portal. So this was initially envisioned to expand that capability and to be able to add a, a text search capability as one of the filters and the drop down things in the open data portal. Um, it's going to take some development work. So in the meantime, we've got this index and this app that we've built so you can use it until we get that um, capability attached to our open data portal. So we've got a, a custom index, we've got a custom Python file went through and pulled out all the unique words and all the frequent word pairs and word triples that were contained within those reports. Uh, and put them into this text file with a list of the reports that they're found in. So if you're looking for a particular phrase or word, um, you'll be able to pull back what reports they're found in. So you'll notice that the format of it is this JSON format, the same as the API calls. Uh, the file is pretty big. You're probably not going to want to read it. Um, you'll want to put it into some kind of tool to have a look at it. If you wanted to download it yourself and have a play, you're welcome to. Um, but we've built a tool for you to do that, and I'll explain that in a second. So You'll also notice that there's not context with it and there's not numbers. So we've filtered some of this stuff out just to make it more um, easier to search. So it's really only for searching for words, letters, things like that. You'll also notice it's not a Google search of the content. So you can't type in a whole long sentence and find exactly the report that that has. It. It's, it's really pulled out of context just to find the keywords and the key phrases and what reports they're in. So it was built for a specific purpose. So just so you understand it, it's not a Google search of what's in the reports. It's built for this um, open data portal search capability. Data science, sorry, you're going to get some stats. So here's some stats about the index. So there's more than 127,000 individual unique words across all the reports. More than half of them are pretty common. They occur in, in quite a few of them. But 20% of those words only occur in a single report, which is, you know, it's pretty interesting. There's some, there's some pretty cool words in there. 
And there's some pretty weird ones too, like hippo. Hippo is a word in there. I have no idea why. Um, when you combine words together, you get obviously more. So there's more than 660,000 word pairs and word um, triples, um, like bottom basin, coal measures, um, all kinds of things. Um, not quite so common. So only 10% of them are common and occur across multiple reports. And more than 60% of them only occur in a single report. So that tells us as well, there's probably some space in there for us to clean this index up. There's probably some stuff in there that no one's ever gonna search for and no one cares about and it's not interesting. Um, so this is sort of the first version of it. Um, it will be updated and improved as we go along. Um, and as I mentioned before, the OCR text file is pretty big. It's probably not something you're going to want to open yourself and have a play with, although you're welcome to try if you want to. So the index file is available on our open data portal. You are welcome to if you want to. Uh, you can load it into a Python dictionary and be able to search for these keyword pairs if you want to. That's a way that you can do it. But if you're not interested in figuring out how to do that, we've built one for you. So there's a text search app. So as I said to you initially, this was envisioned to be part of our Open Data Portal search drop-down menus. Uh, it's not yet. So that's why we've got this available for you. So it's all online. We built it with a Streamlit app. So it's, it's a Python code underneath. Uh, and this is what it looks like. Oh, and the um, modern technology, the app uses the index file and it reads it directly from where it sits in our open data portal with the API URL, like I showed you before how to open it. It does that exactly as well. So you guys can do that too. It's all accessible. So this is what it looks like. You've got a basic search and you type your word in or your phrase or whatever and, and, and hit the search button. But like the open data portal, you've also got an advanced button. And what that does is enable you to use these Boolean and, or, or not to combine words and phrases to find reports that might have different combinations that you might be interested in. Um, underneath, it converts everything to lowercase. So if you want to just type straight in lowercase. Uh, it doesn't have any numbers in there. Remember I told you we took all the numbers out because numbers without context make no sense. So it's just for searching for words and letters. There should be all the elements and, and uh, there won't be the mineral ones with the, the numbers in them. There won't be like molecular formulas in there, but there'll be elements you'll be able to search for if you want to. All right, so here's an example of what like a screenshot of a search might look like. So I've typed in, uh, I think, magnetic anomaly, and it's returned more than 500 reports that have that, um, that term in them. So you can download them that list directly with the download CSV, or maybe you might want to think about 500 might be too many to have a read through. Um, you might want to have a think about how to restructure that search to get exactly what you're after. All right, so once you've got that CSV of the list of reports that you're interested in, um, like I said, you can use that um, the C, um, CCAN downloader example on our open data API GitHub page. You just plug that CSV in and run that script and it'll download all of the reports that are of interest to you. And then you can read through to your heart's content, but it really just narrows down to find the reports that may contain the kind of information that you're after. So I'll give you a fair warning. The app is pretty slow. So um, depends on where you open it from. I know from our, our work office, it's, it's unbearably slow, but from home, it's not too bad. So it depends. So just be a bit patient. Um, but if there are any problems with it, feel free to email us at that open data resources, the GSQ open data email. Um, and also because it's all open and publicly available, we invite you to collaborate too. So you can either give us suggestions by email or you can clone the repository and send a pull request. So that's all for me. Thank you very much for listening. There are a couple of questions online here. Um, so Josh has said, Incredible work. Uh, he's asking, are the OCR reports uh, kept as raw so they can be processed semantically? They are in a docx file uh, that are text searchable. You can do whatever you like with them. Cool. Uh, and then the question that, that I know you've answered already, um, or you know, not know this report, but we did a lot of it. How are misspellings or miss OCR text handled for indexing? Uh, you missed a great conversation with that. So I have a brains trust because I'm not a geologist. So I have a, a team of geologists at GSQ with a team chat. And I, as I'm going through, because I pulled out all the words that were 
you know, I filtered it, the index for English words and geology words. And uh, we've got a, like a list of organizations database and our vocabularies database. So the index contains all of those, but we kicked out anything that was misspelled or um, nonsense. So some of those older reports, some of the OCR artifacts were pretty nonsense. There were long strings of, you know, the same letter repeated over and over. And over. So we kicked all of that out. So there shouldn't be any misspellings in there. And if there are, it's because the Brains Trust and I failed to kick those out. So um, it's a work in progress. There'll be more improvements coming. And obviously, as more of our uh, reports get open file and OCR'd, we'll just keep improving. So baby steps. Do we have any questions in the audience as well? Um, hi, um, nice. Yeah, it looks really good. Um, when the OCR reports go back into the portal, is there metadata to tell which ones have been OCR'd and which are not? There will be the one to the docx file. So if you wanted to search on file type, there should be a docx button you can click and it should pull back. But there's 60,000 of them. So uh, if you want to, you can use the API to filter down exactly what you're after and, um, and go for it. There's another follow-up here question from Josh, who's very excited about the OCRs, I can see. Uh, he <laughs> says, have you considered using Levenstein distances to help you with misspellings? <laughs> yes. There's so many cool things we can do. This is just literally one uh, application of it, and it was it was meant to fill a need. So the whole point of it was to for this open data portal expansion of, of capability. So, yes, um, there's a long list. I'm getting through it. Um, yes, is the answer. We've thought about it. Great. And I'm sure Josh can definitely touch base with you and, and talk through a whole bunch of that as well. So. Sure, please. Yeah, happy to.